Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this blessed day, Lord. We ask, Lord, for complete forgiveness of all of our sins. Be with us as we move forward. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Oh, brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to let you know that we have what? Precious, precious information that when adhered to, it saves lives. I'll tell you guys a little story. Um, Sister Kerr, you, you know, took the liberty to go into my books. You, you, you know, my books, you know, Sister Langley, and then come up to me and say, Brother Luke, do you know what this is? I says, yeah, I'm familiar with the plant. And she said, do you know the medicinal property? I said, um, no, Sister Kerr, can you tell me? She says, yes, I looked in your books. Let me tell you what it has. So I just want to tell you guys right now, you are not allowed to put your hands in my books. Amen? Do not put your hands in my books. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Saints, did information make sense so far in terms of what we're talking about? I want to touch one more topic as we get this all wrapped up here. And it's in relationship to music. Okay? Saints, I'll tell you guys a little something. Many of us know that the, music's, the music that are being played in our churches are not after the order of Christ. Okay? And one of the things I want to alert you on, I'll tell you, guys, I'll tell you a little personal testimony that occurred with myself and a few friends. There's this one church which is a celebration church, right? Absolute celebration church. And it is so easy to have judged this church and think that because they are a celebration church, that they wouldn't really be too receptive to the Word of God? Saints, I'm going to tell you guys something. We found out that the Celebration Church was more receptive to the Word of God than the more conservative churches. I was totally blown away. And you know something? It makes sense. Sometimes when churches are too conservative, don't get me wrong here, I'll, I'll explain. When churches are too conservative, many times they may not allow for the Holy Spirit to work. And then when churches are open and sometimes too open, you get different things. Okay? So the wisdom is somewhere where there got to be a balance, where there's conservativeness, but openness, where if you can prove it in the Bible and spirit of prophecy, you, I'll accept. If you can't prove it along that line, we'll reject. Am I making sense to you? So it's just like, for example, when you read the writings about the way a husband and wife should be, you found that it is good when one is conservative and one hand is free. If both hands are conservative, they tend to be um, um, selfish to the ministry of God. But if you find that one is a giver and one is a holder, that tends to add balance in God's service. They're not going to overgive and they're not going to undergive. Because there is an overgiving too. There's undergiving and there's overgiving. And there got to be a balance where you don't overdo and you don't underdo. Does that make sense to you? And that goes to the music now, saints. Saints, I'll tell you guys something. Um, as a matter of fact, how many guys have heard some heavenly music being played recently in here? Heavenly music. Oh, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Sister Langley said, are we talking the heavenly music after the order of the Lord? If you listen to the music that was played, did you guys hear the music that we played there? Do me a favor. Handle, maybe we can put a little bit of heavenly music on. Let God's children hear what a little of heavenly music sounds like. And it's important that we understand in terms of understanding good music and so forth. I'll tell you what I did personally when I understood music or heard a solid lecture on music. What I did is that all the CDs that I had at my home, because I was a corporate trainer for Best Buy, and I had a lot of that type of music, I took the music that I had, all of it, and I dumped it in the trash, and I replaced it with music that was more appropriate. You know, li listen to this.
if you listen to the way the music is, you know what's nice about the music? You don't find, I'll give you an example. I was at an event a couple days ago, and I'm not going to tell you which event. And as the music began to play, I saw this little child broke out in a dancing. And when the child broke out, it let me know that the music was inappropriate because it was in a religious setting. And the fact that it made that child did what they did, it told me that the music was not conducive to spiritual growth. Am I making sense, dear saints? You know, it's just like people who are familiar with, who are from the Caribbean and things along that line. If you're familiar with like Calypso, as soon as you hear Calypso, what do you start doing? You start whining. You start whining. If you're um, from Jamaica, and as soon as you hear reggae, you start scanting. You, you understand what I'm saying? Depending on the type of music, immediately the person begin to perform acts that are in accordance to those, uh, those type of music. And it's amazing when you understand who is behind the music. As a matter of fact, there's a song that I used to really love. And it was a song that was sung by Barry Manlow. How many guys know this song? Uh, let me see if I can remember it here. I like the songs that makes the... You guys know that song? Do me a favor. If you guys ever stop to think about that song, and if my memory served me right or the information that I have, I think that Oprah did an interview with Barry Manilow. And she asked Barry who gave him that song. How did he come up with that song? And Barry said it didn't take him long to write that song. The song came into his mind just like that, and the song was written like that. If you listen to the words of that song, you'll see that Barry Manilow is not the author of that song. You'll see that Lucifer, Satan, is the author of that song. Because when you watch the words, the words describe Satan. Do me a favor. If you, any of you guys can go on the internet and Google the, the Barry Manilow on the song, I like the, I like the, I like, well, come on, help me the song. What's the name of the song again? I like the songs. Oh, I like the songs that makes the whole world sings. You Google it and think about it. And you watch the word in relationship to Satan and the position that we need, know that he held in heaven. And you'll see that Barry Manlow had nothing to do with that. He was just a vessel that Satan used. And it, that, that song is nothing from but from the enemy. Yes, please, brother. Who, Barry Manlow, he did admit? Right. Claiming it as theirs. Because he says, look, he said the, the, the song just came into his mind. Am I making sense? The song just came in. And when you listen to the song and you see it, you'll find that some of the, just if you stop to really listen to some of these music, you'll understand. And then I'll tell you a little story, you know. Um, I backslided for a while, a good while, and while out there, I would listen to these songs that I, that I knew in the club, and I remember we were dancing to Kurt Franklin in the club. You, you know, a lot of the songs that I see Krishna sit down celebrating, we were dancing to that in the club. The fact that we can dance to it in the club let us know that it was not an appropriate song. Because and we never had Amazing Grace in the club. Okay? We never had that. No, no, no. We never had those neither too. You, you know, um, the cleansing wave and, uh, you know, I see, I see. Oh, no, you don't see that. You know, um, none of those. Calm thou fount of every blessing. No, those weren't in the club. But stomp? Oh, yeah, we were stomping. And why am I saying this is because you'll find that many of the music that we listen to as Christians are inappropriate. Um, Christian rock, gospel rock, gospel reggae, gospel calypso, um, all the, even some of these contemporary songs that we listen to, you'll find that if you take a more conservative role in dealing with music, you'll find that the Lord will bless your mind and bless your mind tremendously. I'll tell you what I do when I'm in a vehicle. You know what I do when I'm in a vehicle? I have the Bible and CD. I have the Desire of Ages. I have the Conflict Ages. I have all these tapes on CD. I use my car 
as a university. You know, I don't have time. You know, I'm trying to find more time in a day to, to study and to do all the things that I, I know the Lord has called me to do. So instead of sitting now listening to all these things, um, focus more on things that are more salvific. Yes, Brother Al. Amen. Okay. Let's continue here. I was looking for my form here. And one of my forms is missing. Uh, but that's fine. I'll just go right ahead and pick it up right here. tell you the next area we're going to go to is here where do you live do you know that the place that you live can actually uh, is conducive to either spiritual growth or it can actually destroy your spiritual life you'll find that country living is more conducive to one spiritual growth you'll find that city living is very hard and very rough and one spiritual life. It also affects the mentality of the kids. Uh, one of the things that you want to be mindful of um, is actually the environment that you place kids in to exercise their minds, their thoughts, and so forth. You never want them to be confined in areas where there's not an abundant of fresh air, where there's not abundant of nature that they can sit back and enjoy. As a matter of fact, just to let you know how important air is, do you know that proper air, proper ventilation, proper breathing technique actually lowers blood pressure? How many guys know that proper air will lower your blood pressure? As a matter of fact, the world knows this so much, they have invented a blood pressure lowering machine called Respite. And it's a, basically a deep breathing machine teaching you how to breathe properly. And when you breathe properly, do you know it actually lowers blood pressure? It is absolutely amazing. Uh, do you sleep with your windows open? At our home, when we sleep, our window is at least gap, and then the time is open full-fledged. Okay? And it, we are told that even through the coldest of winter, if you have accustomed yourself to sleeping with that window partially open, you can keep that window open through the coldest of winter, and you wouldn't have any problems at all. The only time that our window ever comes shut is when it rains, and the rain is coming from that direction. Am I making sense, dear saints? Otherwise, those windows stay open. And if the rain is coming from that direction, we can open the windows from other directions. Uh, I think my wife was counting the amount of windows in our home, and it was a tremendous amount of numbers, um, high 20s or even in the 30s, um, just to give you an idea the amount of windows that we have where we live because we believe in making sure there's proper ventilation, proper light. Uh, I know that there are times that I go to a certain building and as soon as I see the darkness, I'm like, uh-uh, this, this place is not conducive to helpful living. You'll find that in dark areas, mold grows, okay? And you're very likely to get sick. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you guys a story. Um, I remember a, a friend of mine who, uh, who was affiliated with an uh, institution, they were telling, telling us a story of a certain institution where, for some reason, mole had taken over this one institution. And someone walked in, and they immediately knew 
uh, that there was actually mold there. The mold was so bad that the State Department had to come and condemn the building. You, you know, you'll find that in areas that are dark, um, it, uh, it actually facilitates growth of fungus and molds and bacteria and things along that line. Make sure that the area that you are at is fully ventilated for proper air uh, to come in. Yes, dear. You can smell it. Oh, very easy. You can smell mold in a heartbeat. How many guys can smell mold with ease? Oh, yeah, in a heartbeat. I walk in an environment, I can smell mold quick, as quick as ever. You know, if people are having problems with breathing and so forth, we can probably help you in terms of making some lifestyle changes so you can actually smell these things. And maybe one day we'll walk and I can show you some areas, and I'll show you, Sister Simone, some areas that you can smell it real easy. Yeah, it's really. I don't want to tell you the place, but y you can smell it real easy. Um, do you live in a smoke filled environment? I'll tell you a story about that question. I was doing a, a consultation with a young lady, Seventh Adventist lady, and I asked the question, do you live in a smoke filled environment? When she says yes, I knew at that time it was very likely she had married outside of the faith. Or she was a convert that had came in later. But here's the situation. When I looked at the time of her religious experience, I knew it was very likely she had married out of the faith. So based on that one question, I was able to de um, detect that there was a marriage that was unequally yoked and as a result, when I ask the question, the person says yes, I was able to deal with the spiritual part of it um, in terms of marrying outside of the faith uh, in relationship to sickness and disease. Do you have plants throughout the home? Do you know it's important to have proper plants around the home? I'll give you an example. See this carpet that we're sit standing on right here? This carpet actually has formaldehyde in it. You know the paper towels and the tissues that we wipe our face and so forth? It has formaldehyde. What is formaldehyde? It's an embalming fluid. It's a fluid that is used to preserve um, basically anything, including dead bodies. Okay? And it's in the ice cream. Um, and, he, huh? The, the young lady says, is it in all ice cream? Oh, by the way, you should not be eating ice cream. Whether or not tofu, rice, or animal ice cream. No ice cream of any form we should eat. You know why, saints? Wrong temperature. The temperature is wrong. I'll take you to Ministry of Healing, and I'll show you that the temperature is wrong when it comes to ice cream. It doesn't make a difference if it's plant-based. The temperature is wrong. Listen to what the Lord says here. He says, wrong conditions of eating. Uh, page 98 in the book, Pathways to Health and Happiness, Ministry of Healing to Others will be like page 302 to 305. The subtitle is wrong conditions of eating. Um, is the subtitle. And here's what it says. It says, food should not be eaten very hot or very cold. If food is cold, the vital force of the stomach is drawn upon it in order to warm it before digestion can take place. Cold drinks are injurious for the same reason, while the free use of hot drinks is debilitating. What's the body's temperature, saints? 98.1, 6 degrees. For something to freeze, it has to be where? At least 32 degrees. So when you're eating ice cream or cold item, especially things that are frozen, the body has to warm it up from 32 degrees and bring that back up to 98.6 degrees before the body can begin to use it. And many times, by the time it gets to 98.6 degrees, fermentation already took place. Or making sense, dear. Let's go back to the plants in the home. There, there's a reason why I talked about formaldehyde in the carpet. Do you know that there's some plants that are conducive to healthful living? Let me give you some awesome house plants. At, at our home, 
what we have strived to do at our home is to put plants in every single room in our home. Am I making sense this thing? So let me give you an example of a few plants that one should have throughout their home. Number one, the peace lily. Peace lily. Peace lily. It's a lily plant. A lily. Peace, P-E-A-C-E. Lily. Um, it has a white flower. That is correct. Um, a peace lily is an ear purifier. It helps remove formaldehyde from their home. Peace lily. Yeah, they are green. They're broad and green. It, right, right. That is correct. You have the dumb cane. Dumb, D-U-M-B, cane. Okay? The other thing you have, too, is the spider plant. Oh, all these are good for air purification in the home. Okay, the spider plant. You guys know what the spider plant is, right? It throws off the little, the little web. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Amen. The snake plant. The snake plant. Uh-uh, no, not this way. Straight up. Straight up. What are you doing there? Uh-uh. <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. You know what it is? It looks, where are you from? Dagger. It looks like a dagger. You know? Yeah, man. Straight up. Yes. You know what we use? We use it to make rope. We take it, beat it. Psh, beat it, beat it, beat it. And then when it dry, we plait it. Yeah, man. Yes. Are oh, we making sense there? I just had to tell her in the right language, man. Yes. But she called, what happened? She called it a different name. It's a different name she knows it as. Are we making sense here, saints? Let me give you some other, um, some other items that are good. Uh, the dwarf banana tree. A dwarf banana tree is excellent too. A dwarf banana tree. Mm -hmm. What else is good? A rubber tree. Rubber tree is good. Philodendrium. Everybody has philodendrium. You know that one that runs all over people's home? Philodendrium. Everybody has them. I just want to just give, I, I just want to take just a few moments, just give you a few things. You know, of most of the plant, do you know which plant is like one of the best, the best plant to have for ear purification? Not only in your home, but in your backyard? Pine fir. Pine plants. Do you know that the Lord talks about the pine plant having healing capabilities? Pine, pine plant, pine fir. Where's the quote taken from? I can't recall. If you actually just go ahead and, and do a search, you'll actually find the specific quote. Okay? Just look up pine. Just type in pine um, in the spirit of prophecy, and you'll find it. It's, it, it's not many quotes that's related to it so it's a it's a quick find are we making sense this sense yes please i'll tell you real easy if you go to like a home depot or lowe's the plants that are found in the in the building itself a specific section you'll find that those will be the ones that will be um, more appropriate for in home um, more appropriate for in-home application. I have not yet found any plants that cannot be used in the home. You, you, the, oh, well, yeah, there is, a, there is something that you should not grow in the home. That would be mushroom. Okay? Because mushroom does not have chlorophyll in the leaves. And mushroom acts like a human being, which means it breeds out carbon dioxide and breeds in oxygen just like human being. You don't want things that takes oxygen out of the air, okay? So mushroom would be the one hybrid that you wouldn't want to have in the home. Should you eat mushroom? I believe in the principles, fruit, grains, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our creator. 
these food prepared in as simple and natural a manner as possible are the most helpful and nourishing. Uh, my question to you would be to show me where nut mushroom fits under that and if it doesn't fit, my recommendation to leave it alone. Amen? Mushroom is part plant and part animal. Yeah. That's why it has cholesterol in its leaves. And, and um, it has cholesterol in its cells. It, the cells are called chitin. Mushroom has the same uh, uh, cellular structure similar to that of an animal. Uh, not similar to animal, similar to that of crustaceans like shrimp and lobster and conch and crab and so forth. Mushroom is actually considered the vegetal world scavenger. Uh, let, let's continue here. Oh, you guys should know that in Jamaica they call it duppy umbrella. Nobody eat jumbi umbrella. Jonjo? You call it Jonjo? Well, part of Jamaica they call it duppy. Okay, and in the islands where I'm from, I grew up in Antigua, we call it jumbi umbrella. Nobody eat them thing. Nobody eat them thing. You go to, let me tell you something. You go to Antigua and tell somebody you're going to, um, they have mushroom this. They say, me know why not jumbi umbrella, man. Where did different kinds, but I'm just saying the mentality, you, you know? This, like for example, I was talking to someone the other day and they were saying in this one culture, um, when they see dogs, I forget what it is. I forget what the statement was, but when they see dog, it wasn't a positive situation. So um, when everybody's walking around dogs as pet to that one culture, it's like a curse, kind of. It's like a rebuke. So you'll be fine as you go from culture to culture, if you don't understand culture, you can run into some problems there. Uh, let's continue here. Yes, please. Oh yes, of course. And, and in some place they call it mountain chicken too. Yeah. Uh, frogs, you know, mountain chicken. Mm -hmm. The big frogs, they jump high. I'm serious. Yeah. Do you wear tight fitting clothing that restricts your lung expansion? You know, this goes back to the topic we were discussing a, a few minutes ago about um, women wearing girdles. And there, there's this, I saw recently on the television, um, I forget where I, were, I was at, and I, whenever I get an opportunity, I look at television because we don't have that at our home, secular television. So whenever I get a chance out from away from home and I can watch a little TV, I do. I want to know what's new. You know, you find that the Lord actually sent John the Baptist into the city to keep up with what was going on. You know, when you're ministering into the city, you got to know what's going on. Otherwise, guess what happened? You, you become uh, detached from society. And I remember as I was watching television, I, I would see people who was a little larger and they would put these um, like spandex type clothing on and they'll come much smaller. You know, and I know right off the get-go, those are individuals that are going to suffer digestive issues. Okay? You'll find that your tight lacing items will restrict the lungs and will also affect the intestines in terms of digestion. Does that make sense, Saints? Good. Also, make sure at your home, you open up your home. Several hours, we're told, airing out the home constantly. Let that stale air go out and fresh air come in. That negative positive exchange. Let's move on to rest. What is your usual bedtime? We're told that we should go to bed before 10 p.m. at night. Um, like students, you know what's amazing? Do you know that the Lord have instructions for his students? The Lord says students, the latest students should go to bed is what time? 9.30. The latest a student, the Lord says, should go to bed is what time? 9.30. That's the latest a student should go to bed. <laughs> you know, I was amazed when I heard that. I'm like, what? The Lord said, uh-uh. If students are in college, guess what they do? They come home, go to bed immediately, wake up at about 2, 3 in the morning, and they study with the mind being fresh. Don't continue 
on all night because you will not be refreshed. Every, every hour before midnight doubles itself in rest. Like I'll give you an example. If you go to bed at 9 o'clock, the hours before midnight is how many hours? Three. Three hours of sleep is equivalent to how many hours of rest? Six hours of rest. Everything before midnight doubles, and we are told that between the hours of 10 and 12, healing takes place. Healing takes place. And while I'm talking about this, you know a thought just came to my mind too? Um, do you know that angels ministers to your soil? You know, when you're faithful and you call upon the Lord, we're told that the angels ministers to those soil. You know, just wanted to throw that one in here. So we need to get to bed before what time? 10 p.m. at night. Uh, do you know that I've found that when individuals go to bed after 10 p.m. at night, blood pressure is elevated? When individuals go to bed after 10 p.m. at night, blood sugar level is also elevated. If individuals have cholesterol issue, not cholesterol issue, allergy issue, and they go to bed after 10 p.m. at night, guess what happened? In the morning, you're going to see that they have a greater tendencies to allergenic reactions. As a matter of fact, they did an experiment, and here's what the experiment proved, that one week of continual going to bed late. They were going to bed late continually for one week. At the end of one week, these individuals had impaired glucose level, which means that their glucose level was elevated as a result of going to bed late consistently for one week. Can you imagine now if that individual made it a habit um, over a period of time, that person can become a diabetic just by um, that one principle being violated. Now, there are going to be other principles in, com um, uh, in combination with that, your dietary habits and um, hereditary tendencies and so forth. But just that one principle um, impaired the glucose to the point that it did affect tremendously. Yes, my dear, I saw that your hand was raised. The soil, the soil, like your garden soil, no, no. Soil, like dirt. Angels minister to dirt. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, no. I, I met her the other day. Yeah. I, I, oh, trust me. I met, I met that special young lady, Sister Langley, the other day. And I heard the wisdom that came forth from the front right next to You were sitting right next to Elder Daly in the meeting, right? Oh, yes. I, I saw the light coming forth. Amen? Amen. Do you wake up during the night? This is actually a pretty deep statement. Let me tell you something. That waking up during the night actually tells me a couple of things. It lets me know if the person tend to be drinking too late into the night. If the person is drink, um, drinking right before bedtime, you know it's very likely they're going to wake up at night. I'll tell you a little story about my wife because she's not here to defend herself, but mom is in the back to hear too. Um, my wife, she loves water. And my wife can drink water all day long, including all night long. But it just so happened that my wife used to get up in the middle of the night to use the restroom. So we were at Wildwood, and my wife's counselor um, said to her, you know, Dr. Parks is like, oh, but Luke is telling all his wife little secret. And Dr. Parks like, I'm going to tell Erica. I, I know Dr. Parks back there. Her and my wife to team up, you know. But, you know, I take advantage when my wife isn't here, you know. Amen. So my wife's counselor, um, Sister Osiris, she said to my wife, Erica, you need to stop drinking at 6 o'clock. So since that time, and this is years now, my wife has not drank after 6 p.m. at night. And would you believe it? She never have to get up at night to use the restroom. Isn't that something? Another thing too, you know that most people actually drink water the wrong way? Can I get your bodily again, dear sister? Okay. You don't mind if I, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Do you know, many people, you know, when they drink water, they just put the bottle at their head and they go, chup, 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 and they just drink the whole thing. Instead of actually just take a little. 
and I rest it down. They actually just turn it up and go all the way through. Within a couple hours after doing that, it runs right out. Am I making sense to you? Remember now, you want to bring that in gradually. So if you find that you're going goop, 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 you'll be up all night urinating, all night long. Does that make sense? Go ahead. You remember the garden experiment we did there? Take a whole bucket of water, it just washed away everything. But if you take the same amount and just spray it on, the soil absorb everything, right? Amen. Amen. Does that make sense, saints? Do you snack before bedtime? Yeah. Do you sleep with lights on? Oh, saints, that is deep. That question right there is deep. Individuals say that they're having problems sleeping, and next thing you found, that they actually have either an alarm clock with this bright light, or they have these cell phone with all these flickering lights, or all these lights in their room. Do you know that when there's all these little lights in the home, in the room, those lights go through the iris, it goes all the way back to the pineal gland, stop the production of melatonin, you get no restful sleep at night. And the only color light that they found that did not affect the human body, Dr. Ponks, is it the blue light? The blue light, all the other part, lights, I was watching, it's so funny, I was watching, what was it? Either on CNN or MSNBC, and they were talking about the lights. Uh, uh, and all lights affect the iris, except for blue light. So blue light was the only light that they found that did not affect, have the same effect on the iris in terms of the production of melatonin. But my recommendation to you is don't use any at all. But now, saints, listen to this now. There's a balance in teaching this message now. If you're dealing with older folks, more mature individuals, you know, let them put those little night lights down. Amen, saints? Because if you don't do that, those saints, those saints come off the bed the wrong way and they slip and fall and break a bone, we're in a worse situation. Amen? So there is a balance. So keep that in mind. Even though we know that the light can reset the biorhythm, the biological rhythm, you want to also keep in mind that if you deal with more mature individuals, just give that little extra leeway and ask them to just cover their head. Amen? Do you work the night shift or swing shift? That is a deep question. I know you probably say, Brother Luke, everything is deep for you, isn't it? Oh, no. This one is really deep. Okay? Listen good. There's a group that dies the fastest, and that's the swing shift group. Their body have the ability to keep no track of time. These individuals have no rhythm at all. As a matter of fact, do you know who dies the fastest? Nurses and doctors. And it's so funny that these are individuals who have taken an oath to commit themselves for the saving of lives. But you want to know what the very thing that happened? It's not the doctor's fault. Now, saints, I, I don't blame the doctors and the nurses. I blame it on you and I. You and I violate the laws of health so bad, and we have no respect for people's family. I am dead serious. You have no respect for people's family. And because these people have taken an oath for the saving of souls, they end up now have to get out of bed, sacrifice their life and their, their loved one's life to come and save your life. It's true. Oh, do we have any doctors or nurses in here? Okay. Is, isn't that correct? You know what I mean? Because when you guys take that oath, you guys have made a commitment to the saving of lives. And regardless of what happened, no matter how sleepy, tired you are, you got to get up. I have a friend that just got back from Jamaica, and she's a surgeon. And she works some ridiculous schedule. I ask myself, how do you stay cognitive? How are you able to stay alert? And it's like, no wonder sometimes the physicians use coffee and these caffeinated items to stay alert. You know, because they are so overworked to, keep, to save a life, it is unbelievable. The other thing, too, 
is that most nurses and doctors are constipated. Uh, it's true. And I'll tell you why. Yes, please. And have bladder problems. You know why? Think about it. If a doctor is in the midst of a surgery and they're performing a surgery on you, can they leave to go and urinate? No. They got to complete the surgery. If the doctor is in the midst of doing some major procedure on you and they want to use the restroom, can they leave? No. They got to complete the procedure. So, so they end up holding it in, holding it in, and there's where they develop the bladder problems. There's where they develop all these other medical related issue in the treatment of your life, trying to save you. Am I making sense there? Okay? So our goal is to avoid our physicians and our nurses from the swing shift, from the night shift, and maintaining a normal schedule. Plus, here's what happened. This is what's real, real bad about swing shift and night shift. God created two types of creatures. What are they? Diurnal and nocturnal creatures. If in most cases, you never see a night creature operate during the day. And in most cases, you never see a day... Okay, let's back up. In most cases, you never see a night creature operating during the day. But in many cases, you see human beings try to operate in both REM. They act as their boat, both night and day creature. Can't, can't happen. Can't happen. If you work the night shift, saints, you need to ma maintain the night shift seven days a week. You need to maintain the night shift seven days a week. I'll give you an example. If you work 7P to 7A for three days, and when you come home, whatever schedule you adhere to, if you continue on and then you go to sleep about 2 in the afternoon, even on your day off, you need to maintain that 7P to 7A. All of your business needs to be done at night. Am I making sense to you? You need to maintain that same schedule. And in your home, your curtains should be darker curtains to avoid the light from coming in because once light comes through and it hits that iris, it's going to reset the biorhythm in the human body. This, yes, please. The patch, you can sleep with the patch too. But you want to know what's kind of funny? The human body is absolutely amazing. It is not just the iris, the skin. Think about it. If you, if, even when you have a, that black patch over your face, can you tell it's day? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. The human body is absolutely amazing. When the sun hits the skin, it also helps with timing. But the main timing is set for the eyes. The main timing is set using the eyes. Another thing that one needs to realize is going to bed at the same time seven days a week. Now, saints, listen to this. We know that there might be one or two circumstances that prevent us from going to bed on time. But even though that there are circumstances, we know that those should be the exceptions rather than the norm. Okay? And I'll share something with you guys that is pretty deep. Going to bed at night sometimes... I, you know, not that I have a problem sleeping. I sleep when I go to bed. But sometimes there's like so many little things in my mind that I need to shut down before I can actually sleep. You know, and I'm like, okay, did, I, did this get tucked away? Did that get tucked away? Making sure everything is secure before I go to bed. And sometimes I see that time just keep creeping, creeping, creeping. And then I have a burden for souls too. And then when someone comes and says, hey, I need a little help. I'm like, okay, hey, what should I, should I? You know, you know, Jesus did step a few times, you know, and you, you try to justify and so forth, but you realize that just like you practice on all other sphere all across in terms of the nutrition, the water, and all these other things, regularity in bedtime has to also go hand in hand. Do you know the most powerful antioxidant that we have on the face of the earth? Melatonin most powerful, most, most potent um, and, um, antioxidant is going to bed on time. And that's before 10 p.m. at night. Last but not least, trust in divine power. Trust in divine power. 
It's important that we have regular daily devotional and communion with God. And it's important also to that we spend time reading the Bible. I'll tell you what I have done, saints. You know what I've done that has um, to help with my spiritual growth? My little cell phone right here. I have all of the spirit of prophecy on this little phone. All of the spirit of prophecy. I also have the entire Bible, dictionary, um, like a concordance kind of, all in here, hymnal. All of that are all in here. You know, many times people are looking all over for things, and I just pull my little stuff out and read. Even, uh, and also to being on the road because I travel a lot, um, and I might have a roommate in the bed with me or in the same room with me, I can easily pull out my little phone, do my devotion without turning on the light, and nobody would even know. Just, you know, using technology. You got to come up with creative ways to have a devotional life. You know, um, this is one of the ways that it has helped me. So I thought I'd share that with you. Finding more and more creative ways. On my laptop too, I have the entire spirit of prophecy, Bible, you name it. Um, that's another means that I have uh, to see, to make sure that I have access to whatever necessary writings that I need to get access to. Uh, you know, it's something that we found out, and Dr. Parks and other Parks can tell you guys this. How many guys want to see an experiment? Wait, before you say, raise your hand. Before you raise your hand, don't raise your hand yet. How many want to see a deep, deep, deep experiment? I'm serious. Raise your hand for a deep experiment. Okay, good. Now, watch this. How many individuals have read the conflict of the ages cover to cover. Hold a second. Patriots and prophet, cover to cover. Raise your hand. Cover to cover. Just show you. Patriots and prophet, cover to cover. Look at this now. Prophets and kings, cover to cover. Desire of ages, cover to cover. Acts of the apostle, cover to cover. Gen um, great controversy, cover to cover. Let me share with you what the Lord has said. He says that these books contain truths that will prevent us from being deceived in the last days. Am I making sense to you? Because these books contain truths that will prevent us from being deceived in the last days, here's my recommendation. And I'll tell you how I read. When I'm reading The Conflict of the Ages, this is how I read it. Uh, let me use this. When I'm reading the conflict of the ages, here's how I read it. In most chapters, it actually lists underneath the scriptural reference. I read the scriptural reference first before I read the story. And the reason why I do that, here's what it does in my mind. It gives me a parallel, okay? It gives me a parallel in my mind where it actually shows me how to differentiate the Bible from the spirit of prophecy. And in my mind, at any given time, I can cross the line or switch back on one side. I could be walking, oops, I switch spirit of prophecy, oh, back, oh, Bible, back, and just keep going because I read them together. It's absolutely amazing we can just switch back and forth with ease. Are we making sense there? Make time for a devotional life. And you, not only does a morning, you want a morning devotional life, but you want an evening devotional life. And we have a little outline here that we ha su just suggested outline. And this is no standard, okay? That for individuals who want to use it, they can. And we say start with a word of prayer, sing a few hymns, read a devotional book. And since, just to let you know, I am very, very, very biased, very partial um, to all of the writings of Sister White. Very biased, very partial. Um, I'll tell you something. I know we have a lot of good authors um, in our church, but here's my recommendation. My recommendation is to read all of the writings of Ellen White first, and when you're finished, then you read the other authors if they're still around. Am I making sense to you? Read the information from our prophet first, and then if any time left over, then you read the other things. Am I making sense to you? 
just a simple suggestion um, uh, that I thought that would work best for you. Uh, and I found you do your heaviest part of your devotion in the morning, and you can leave the evening devotion uh, to the lighter things. Study the health message at night, and then in the morning you can study a heavy biblical principle. And this section, Trusting God, you know which book I thought that was absolutely awesome? There are two books that are awesome for this, but one especially. Uh, the Step to Christ book is awesome book to read when dealing with the trust in God because it talks about forgiveness, true repentance, um, making things right with God and different things. Normally when I deal with the section trust in God where people have broken vows to God, made promises to him that have not fulfilled and things like that, I found that the Step to Christ book act, act, um, actually is just so wonderful. It is absolutely amazing when it comes to teaching spiritual principle um, and getting people to make things right with the Holy God. Was the information helpful, saints? Saints, I just wanted to take just a little while to go through that form with you. Letting you see what each question basically uh, uh, mean. And like in the spiritual section, I did skip a few, but I, I want to probably just tack it in here for you. Whenever you see in the spiritual area, people miss questions, that means normally it's a, it's a loaded bomb. There's a lot of information underneath that question that was missed. So here's what you got to do. When dealing with that one question, open it up cautiously. Don't just go and just pop the paper wide open because it may explode in your hand. Take your time and open it. Say, you know, you know, Sister Preacher, you know, I saw you missed the question here. Dear, um, is there a reason or did you want to discuss it or not? It's all right. Does make a difference. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So, have you broken any vows? You know, so if they're like, oh, no, 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 I'm fine. I've worked it out with God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Leave that alone. Back right up. You don't know, need to know people's sin. People work things out with God. That's between them and Jesus. You don't need to know their business. Your main goal is to make sure that things have been worked out with Jesus, and that's between them and Jesus. Amen? Was the information helpful, saints? Let us just thank the Lord. Before I thank the Lord, let me ask you, do you think you can actually do a consultation now, saints? Do you think you can? At least try? Yeah. And here's what we want to do. Experiment on some friends or family members. You, you, you know, practice a little on your friends or family members. Bring them in harm the laws of health, offer the prayer of faith, and you sit back and watch the glory of God. Let me thank the Lord here. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to work for the salvation of mankind. Be with us, Lord, as we go into our next phase, the touch. Amen.